Well, today I just decided I want to give a little, a little bit of wisdom about something that I've noticed a lot of times. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I really want to make this almost like a little devotional that means something. So if you will, if you just look with me in the middle panel, I'm going to talk about briefly about pastors and clergy that teach that we are not under God's law, but they teach that we must tithe. I'm going to tell you today, I believe that they are under the worst condemnation of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, than anybody else verbalized in the Bible. He calls them hypocrites, and he said they make you hypocrites. Now, Tim, if you're going to say that, prove your point. Well, let's move quickly through the Bible. Let's go to Matthew 23 and 23. This is what people like to use when they say, well, Jesus didn't condemn tithing. So when Matthew 23 and 23 on my left-hand panel, ESV version, Jesus says, whoa, a condemnation, a warning to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and of anise and of cumin. It didn't say money. And they did have money. They had money for temple tax. They had money. They had money. They had gold. They had silver. They had money. But he says, you pay tithe of these agricultural things and have omitted, that means that you neglected the weightier matters of the law. In other words, he's saying, you do this from the law, but you exclude this from the law. You made the choice to do that. And he said, the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These, the judgment, the mercy, and the faith, you ought to have done and not to leave the other undone. When he say you have omitted the weightier matters of the law, what is weightier? Well, when we look at a definition of weighty, let's look at what is called the Lexham Theological Word Book. The word is bares. That word means you neglect the important, serious, burdensome, grave, and dangerous matters of the law. In other words, let's look over here, the word epitome. You let go the weightier, the justice, the mercy, and the faith. You send that away. You give it up. You emit it like, that's what they, you divorce, counsel, pardon, and leave out the part that's the weightier matters of God's righteous law on your own choice. That's what he says. You leave out the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. He said, all of us of the law. But what you do is you say, give me the money, show me the money, and you'll be okay. Now, notice what he says. And he said, and not leave the other undone. We, you, what do you mean? Same thing. Give it up. And then what does he call them? You blind guides. You strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. You strain out a, what, the tithe? I got to pay the tithe. And you strain it that you preach that you wear Malachi chapter 3, verse 9 and out. But you don't tell people about justice. You don't tell them about mercy and the love of God. Dr. King said, when I was in jail, I expected the clergy, the white clergy to help me. And you didn't. And the black clergy did not help me. And you say, it's not time, Martin. It's not time. I would submit to you, we have the same thing now. We have people, we don't want to talk about black history. That was in the past. Let that go. But just Judgment and justice say that when something is stolen, when something is taken, there must be restitution. I heard a preacher say yesterday, don't talk to me. You don't need to talk about that. White people don't owe me nothing. First, let's get this clear. We're not talking about your preference. We're not talking about you making a judgment. We're talking about what the word of the living God says about justice and restitution and mercy. 
compassion. Why do you think they were given an agricultural thing? He calls them hypocrites. I like the way that uh, my wife, when she was talking to me about this one day, she looks at it from the vantage point of Luke being a Gentilian person writing from another time he taught. Listen, but woe, I mean, Luke eleven forty two. 42, remember we're on a time limit, but woe unto you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment. And the love of God, you can have people raising hell in your home, people raising hell in your house, people doing things, locking up people that shouldn't be locked up, and you pass over that. But all I want to do is go to church, church, church. I want to sing. I want to talk about a sermon and sit up there and clap my hands. But judgment is not being done in the street. People are being kidnapped. They're being trafficked. They're being abused. Preachers are lying to people. Ministers are doing things. We are shooting and killing one another. We pass over, look at it, judgment and the love of God. What does the love of God do? It tells us to keep his commandment, 1 John 5 and 3. He said, these you ought to have done and not leave the other undone. You want to say you're a child of God? Did Jesus pass over justice, mercy, and faith? Luke 4 and 18 says, he said that the spirit of God was upon him. He is anointing him to preach the gospel to the poor, sent him to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovering of sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Notice that, preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, are we going to do that? Recovering sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. If you're following Jesus the Christ, that was his method. That was his mandate. And if we say that we love God and have the spirit, John chapter 16, verse 8 says what? And when he is come, talking about the spirit of truth, whom the father would send in the son's name, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. We reprove the world of not tithing. Why is it that we can lay aside judgment, mercy, and faith, and the love of God, but we can take the tithe to say you're not under the tithe. But Jesus said the tithe was okay before he died. And he said, you ought to do it. But we don't do justice, mercy, and faith. He says we are hypocrites. Lastly, on this one, Genesis 18 and 19, before Jesus came to earth, what did he tell? What was it told about Abraham, how he would be? It says, I know him. This is what he talks about Abraham. I know him. He will command his children and his household after him, and they will keep the way of Yahweh to do justice and judgment, and that the Lord may bring upon Abraham all that he has spoken unto him. How is it then we, to call ourselves the people of God, will let people tell us we don't need to do justice, we don't need to do mercy, and we don't need to have faith. All we need is the tithe. We teach people to be hypocrites. Let's finish with this. Matthew 28, I mean, 23 and 15. Remember when I says, I said that the pastors and the clergy that teach that we are not under God's law and teach that we must tithe, that they are under no worse condemnation. He told them, woe, woe to you Pharisees, scribes, and that's what he said, and hypocrites. Well, let me show you. In the 23rd chapter of Matthew, verse 15, it says, Warn to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you come past or you go about and encircle the earth, you come past the sea and land to make one proselyte, one convert, and when he is made, you make him a twofold more, twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. What do you mean, twofold child of hell? You neglect the law of God. You will accept the money. You teach them to neglect God's word, his righteous judgment, and you teach them to pay the money. And if they pay the money, they're all right with God, and they never have to deal with justice, mercy, faith, 
restitution, relieving the poor, doing things for those that are broken heart, set, setting apart those that are bruised. Bru I want to say bruised, but I want to say bruised because I heard somebody say that before. That's it. The tithes. When you elevate the tithe above the judgment and mercy of God, not only does Jesus call you a hypocrite, he said you're condemned and you take the people that believe what you teach and become a part of it more condemned than you are. All I want you to do is think about it and act accord accordingly. Thank you for your time. Maybe we'll do it again a little later sometime. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his glorious face shine upon you, be gracious to you, and give you his shalom. Amen.